Welcome to Davos Diaries. The World Economic Forum is an important congregation of decision makers of governments and businesses along with renowned academicians and economists from around the world. Let's hear what the delegates of the World Economic Forum had to say about their experience at Davos. Oh, it's much bigger now. Too, m- many more people. This is much smaller. Traffic in Davos is much more and the crowds are much more. It's been more than 20 years uh, in Davos. Uh, you know, earlier times uh, Davos was a much quieter place. We even had a sports day uh, in the four in the four days that we or uh, five days we were here. But now clearly, you know, there's a lot more happening, a lot of activities. As you know, it's a mix of events. So you have the regular uh, seminars and sessions, and then you have special events to which you're invited. And so it's a great opportunity to sort of hear new, brilliant thinking from across the world, and to meet people who uh, you otherwise might not have had the opportunity to meet. This is my first experience of being here all uh, the five days, and I'm having a great time. I've noticed that you know uh, all the sessions that are talking about the theory of capitalism, how the overpaid bankers, the euro, and whether Greece will collapse and Italy will not, are gloom and doom. And um, all those sessions are comp- open and you can get seating all the time. But if you go to the sessions which are talking about art, literature, sciences, engineering, the uplifting stuff, the environment, those sessions are fully packed and that's where I've been going. Well, Davos is always an exhilarating experience for the simple reason that the best minds of the world converge here. There's a lot to talk about, there's a lot to discuss. The ambiance is uh, exhilarating, uh, that's the least I can say. And I'm delighted at the meetings that I've had so far. I get a sense that the world is determined to get over the present economic crisis and to move towards a more fair and a just world. The mood at Davos was a mix of optimism and pessimism about the global and the Indian economy. Clearly the global economy is under stress. The Eurozone uh, will be an issue. Looks like after hearing Merkel here and other people that they will be able to sort out their problems but not completely so there will be a slowdown but India seems to be doing very well so in 2012 we've started very well the stock market is up about 15 percent the rupee has firmed up again uh, uh, about uh, five to seven percent and uh, I think some reform announcements like 100 percent FDI and single brand retail etc have come through so I think it's a very good start to 2012 and I hope the good start uh, continues and uh, the year ends up well for the economy. This time uh, the focus is largely on Europe, uh, you know, the sovereign debt crisis that's facing Europe and its impact on uh, the European economy and the global economy. So a lot of discussions uh, uh, centering around that. My takeaway from what I've heard so far, uh, I'm not an expert in, uh, you know, Uh, European affairs, but my takeaway is that uh, collectively uh, a way will be found to uh, channel resources, efforts, policy uh, to pull Europe out of this crisis. Investors worldwide should be bullish about India. You know, the 9% has slowed down to 7% and not the end of the world. In India, the only other thing that I have to add is that we have to be conscious of the fact that it's a competitive market and capital will flow to the highest return and the highest opportunity. So if the Indian government does a few things and cashes in on the fact that people are now coming back to accept India as an acceptable risk, money is coming back, inflation is down, stock market is up, people's confidence is up, something, the few things that the government needs to do with respect to infrastructure, foreign and direct investment, they need to do something about power. Okay. If some of those things happen, then India is a growth story. If they don't, then India is not. I think there are problems in the world economy, but the recent IMF forecast has said that the global economy will, despite everything, grow at 3.8%, uh, which is not a very, very uh, bad uh, sign. I think there is a problem, but I would not rate it as a crisis of unmanageable proportions. The collective uh, ingenuity of the world leaders will see through the crisis. Uh, I'm hopeful. As far as the Indian economy is concerned, Even after revising our growth forecast, we still hope to grow by 6.9% in GDP terms in this very year. And over the 12th five-year plan, we hope to be able to grow by 8.5% 
in GDP terms, which I think under the present circumstances is quite a remarkable achievement. I continue to be hopeful and my hope is not based on uh, any flight of fancy, it is based upon facts. There have been some problems within the country. Uh, we have not been able to move as fast as we wanted to, uh, as far as the second generation economic reforms are concerned. But the government at the level of all the senior ministers, including the Honorable Prime Minister, has said that we continue to have faith in our ability to move forward. We will stay the course. The Indian economy has to grow by 8.5 to 9.5 percent during the 12-5 year plan. I think we should clearly view at the long-term macro perspective in India. I agree that at the moment we have a little bit of a negative to skepticism sentiment going on across the globe and I think the Euro crisis and some other uh, issues are definitely bothering a lot of people. But I think if you look at the long-term potential, uh, especially the Indian market has for export as well as for, for the domestic demand, the long-term potential is definitely very, very strong. And I think if policy makers give us an business environmental friendly uh, policies, definitely India has a lot of potential, being it on the skill set which is available, being it on the domestic demand which is there, and being it also because of its attractiveness for foreign direct investors to come into India. A lot of discussions going around here at Davos because uh, all people are worried about the situation, not only in Europe, uh, the situation as a whole in a lot of countries and states is difficult because uh, the sovereign debt situation is the same for United States than for China, for emerging markets than for Europe. And it is very difficult to work out in a very short time the right solutions. Driving on ice, skiing, shopping, socializing and discussions at the World Economic Forum. There's something for everyone at Davos. That's all in this edition of Davos Diaries. See you next time.